In Creo Simulate, you can use gravity loads so that the weight of your components are factored into your structural analyses. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in Creo Simulate. I am in structure mode. Be aware that you can create gravity loads in structure mode only. Let's go to gravity. And here we have the dialog box. First thing that you can do is change the name if you desire. I'm going to call it my gravity load. You can also change the color that it's going to be displayed in. You can choose which load set it is going to belong to, or you could even create a new load set right from this dialog box. I'm gonna cancel out of there. The next thing that you're going to do is specify the coordinate system that you're going to use in order to define your gravity load. And by default, it is using the world coordinate system. And you can see a display down here of the different directions in that coordinate system. If this doesn't work for you, you can use the selected button to change to a different coordinate system. Then you are going to specify how you're going to define the acceleration due to gravity. From the drop down list, you can either specify the components in X, Y, and Z. You could also specify the vector and then the magnitude in that direction or direction points and magnitude. In this particular situation, you would use two different datum points in order to define a vector and then specify the magnitude. Let's go back to the first one, components, and take a look down here to the world coordinate system. So I can see that Y is pointing up, so I would need to have a negative value in the Y direction. Be aware of that. Sometimes people make the mistake of having gravity with a positive value in the Y direction so that gravity would be acting in the wrong direction. Make sure that you're applying it in the right direction. Here we have a drop down list where we can change the set of units that we're using. One nice convenient one that they have here is this grav variable, which will use an acceleration of 1g. And that way, if you're trying to simulate something going through maybe 3g's or 6g's of acceleration, hey, you can just use this gravity in here and then specify a value of negative 6. And that way, I would have 6g's acting downward. But let's take a look at another way of doing this. Let's see, let's say I am using feet per second squared and I want it in the negative y direction. Well, the value there would be 32.2 or if we did, let's say, inches per second per second, we could do that negative 386.4 or if you are using it in, let's see, trying to remember the other units, eh, it's like 9.8 meters per second per second so let's change to oh we don't have meters in here uh, you know, there it is meters per second and negative 9.8 hey if i get that wrong don't you know make too much fun of me so anyhow there we have our acceleration due to gravity actually i think it's negative 9.81 meters per second per second if you want to you can click the preview button and there you can see the indication of the gravity load. Be aware that this gravity is going to be acting at the center of gravity or center of mass of your part or your assembly. So let's click the OK button out of here and let's deselect everything. There you can see our gravity load on the screen. I can highlight it. You can see it placed in the model. And please, if you're doing structural analyses of components on Earth, Use a gravity load. One of the biggest omissions I see from structural analyses is that people don't include that gravity load in there. Hey, pretty simple to create. Make sure that you are using it. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.